Good morning. Uh, we are here at Appropriations around the Horseshoe, and um, we're going to be uh, represent House District 66, which is parts of the towns of Casco, Poland, and Raymond. Representative Cardone. Hello, I'm Barbara Cardone. I represent House District 127, part of Bangor. Representative Corey. Good morning, Patrick Corey, House District Slate 25, which is part of Wyndham. Representative Millett. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So one Millett, House District 71, Waterford. Sweden, Norway, and West Paris. Representative Hymanson. Patty Hymanson, representing House District 4, parts of York, Wells, Sanford, and all of Ogunquit. Representative Cloutier. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Kristen Cloutier, I represent House District 60, which is part of my hometown of Lewiston. Uh, Representative Arata. Good morning, my name is Amy Arata, and I represent House District 65, which includes New Gloucester and part of Poland. Um, Representative Martin. Good morning, John Martin, House District 151, Northwestern Arusta County. Senator Davis. Good morning, everybody. My name is Paul Davis. I represent Senate District 4, which is all of Piscataquis County and parts of Somerset and Penobscot. Senator Bailey. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Donna Bailey, proudly serving the people of Senate District 31, which is Saco, Old Orchard Beach, Hollis, Lemington, and part of Buxton. And my co-chair, Representative Purse. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Teresa Purse. I represent House District 44, which is the majority of Falmouth, and I serve as the House Chair on AFA. And my name is Kathy Breen. I represent six and a half communities in Cumberland County, and I serve as Senate Chair of Approps. Uh, I was just reminded we had a little bit of a te technical glitch, so we are on audio tonight, but we are not on video. Um, we did sound out. Oh, we are on both. Oh, okay. Disregard that. We're okay. Thank you. So far, so good. We're on camera. Um, so uh, we're going to start. Uh, we are going to wrap up tonight. And we're going to start with some work on more work on positions, and then we'll go to the MODOCs, and we'll be walking through each issue, each thing as uh, each initiative, and um, we do have some amendments that we will be articulating verbally, um, and we'll take we'll have pr probably share that a little bit and um, till we get to the end, and then take a committee vote on our amended on our, our amendment. So um, are there any questions from any of the members before we get started? Okay, um, Representative Purse and Representative Millett will do their usual thing. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. We'll be starting with uh, LD 1995, a proposal to um, eliminate some vacant positions. And your sheet looks like this if you have it with you. Uh, I'll just read it off. We'll do a second and go from there. So this is in the Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. Uh, I move we eliminate three vacant full-time egg poultry processing inspector positions and two vac vacant intermittent egg poultry processing positions. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Thank you. Also in the Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry, I move to eliminate one vacant intermittent certified seed specialist position. Second. That's a mouthful. Oh my God. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. In the Department of Professional and Financial Regulation, I move to eliminate one vacant part time insurance claim examiner position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
13-0. Uh, Madam Chair, just I'm not sure people are were clear that this is not part of the MoDoc. This is something in addition to that. So people who are scoring at home have, just have to listen and pay attention and watch the rerun on YouTube if they need to. For those playing along at home. Okay. So we're still in the Department of Professional and Financial Regulation. I move to eliminate one vacant secretary associate associate position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Corrections, I move to eliminate one vacant advocate position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department uh, in the adult community corrections. I move to eliminate one vacant part-time probation officer position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department. I move to eliminate one vacant juvenile program worker position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department, I move to eliminate one vacant intermittent teacher MS plus 30 position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department, Long Creek Youth Development Center, I move to eliminate one vacant teacher MS juvenile position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Environmental Protection, I move to eliminate two vacant intermittent conservation aid positions. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department, I move to eliminate one vacant office associate two position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Health and Human Services, I move to eliminate one vacant part-time office assistant position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Same department, I move to eliminate one vacant part-time physician assistant position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, I move to eliminate one vacant intermittent the deputy game warden position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Labor, I move to eliminate two vacant career consultant positions. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Marine Resources, I move to eliminate one vacant office associate two position. Second. Any, any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Defense, Veterans, and Emergency Management, I move to eliminate one vacant full-time military security police officer position, one vacant part-time military police officer position, one vacant inventory and property associate one position, one vacant custodial worker two position and one vacant part-time building mechanical system specialist position. Second. All those, um, any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. In the Department of Transportation, I move to eliminate one vacant procurement contracting specialist. I'll second that and note that this is a highway fund position, but I'll second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. And in the Department of Administrative and Financial Services, I move to eliminate one vacant public service coordinator one position and one vacant office assistant two position. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. May I just make one? Uh, there was a typo okay. in the Department of Labor. Uh, it was a, actually three vacant career consultant positions being eliminated. And the typo was mine. So in the Department of Labor on page three of the document, it should be, we should change the two to a three. Is that a friendly amendment we can all accept? Friendly amendment, seconded. 
Any discussion? All those in favor? 12-0. Uh, Just keep moving. Oh, I like to keep those. Oh, oh whatever. Uh, we'll turn now to the MODOC that everyone is familiar with, and we're going to begin on page six of the MODOC. Yep. Feels like people are turned to page six. We'll begin on line 88 in the Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry, Office of the Commissioner. Uh, I'd like to move in this line item. It provides funding to address the PFAS contamination. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. I know that there's a company language with this section, but I think we'll wait till the end to do all of our language at one time. Our next line item is 90, uh, line 97 on page seven. Uh, Madam Chair, this has to do with the tick lab and I will let you be the bearer of the good news. I hope I can get through this. Um, so we have a, an appropriation uh, for the, um, UMaine Extension Service um, Tick Lab, and uh, we're going to cut the annual appropriation in half. So, um, starting in FY twenty three, we're going to appropriate two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars per year, ongoing, and then um, there is a bill LD 808 that um, proposes to eliminate a fee on pesticides that was designed to fund the tip lab, tick lab but never really did the job. So we're gonna eliminate the fee and distribute the money in that account um, according to the formula of the underlying legislation. So, um, I think that's all I need to say. Is that right, Maureen? Okay. So are there any questions or discussion about that? I'll move that in as amended. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? 12-0. So um, Madam Chair, that a motion then accompanied for, was for both the language and the appropriation? Correct. Thank you. Our next line item is um, line 99. And I'd like to move this. This is the Fire Protection Commission. Um, and I'd like to move this in. Second. Any discussion? Sorry, any discussion? All those in favor? 12-0. Our next line item is 100. Um, this is the Board of Trustees of the Maine Community College System. Uh, this provides one-time funding for two years of free community college. I'd like to move uh, that this line item in. Second. Um, do we need? Well, that's the language. The part. separate language. Okay, great. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. I think we'll go to line 137. This is in the 
Department of Education, School Finance and Operations, and it provides the funding to pay the difference with the federal reimbursement for our free breakfast and lunch program. I'd like to move this in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. The next line item is line 145, the Board of Trustees for the University of Maine system, the Maine Economic Improvement Fund. I'd like to move this in as amended, lowering the uh, amount from 3 million to 2 million. Second. Any line 145, sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. Next, we'll go to line 165, which is on the top of page 11. This is in the Department of Health and Human Services. Riverview Psychiatric Care, it's line 165 and 166. And I'd like to move this in as of amended, establishing two psychiatric nurse practitioner positions. Compared to the ask of four, so we got correct. It's a lowering from four to two. Second, the motion to amend. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. We'll now go to line 178, which is at the bottom of page 11. This is also in the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's funding to uh, for services performed by the Office of the Attorney General. I'd like to move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Line 179, same department and uh, same providing uh, funding for services performed by the Office of the Attorney General. I move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. We'll go to line 180, uh, again, in the Department of Health and Human Services, Mental Health Services, and it's also providing funding for services performed by the Office of the Attorney General. I move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Line 181, same department. Uh, this is the Office of Family uh, independence and it's again providing funding for services performed by the office of the attorney general i move that in second any discussion all those in favor 13 0. line 182 department of health and human services office of aging and disability services for the adult protective services and this is again to provide funding for services performed by the office of the attorney general i move that in second any discussion all those in favor, 13-0. We'll next go to line 201, which is on page 13. We're going to deal with lines 201 and 202. This is in the Department of Health and Human Services, uh, Medicare payments to providers, um, and we're gonna move both of these out. Second to both. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. We'll now go to line 235. This is in um, the Department of Economic and Community Development, administrative um, within the Department of Administration. And I'd like to move this out. Second. Sorry, I'm just checking on the. Yep, that's no. line 235. Okay. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. We'll next go to line 242. This is in, on page 15, 242, Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, Office of the Commissioner. 
Uh, this is providing funding for the consolidation of the department by relocating to a larger building in Augusta. And we're gonna move this in as amended by moving the amount in the all other category for FY22 to FY23. Second is amended. 242. Any discussion? Madam Chair, is this, was this intended to be ongoing or one time? One time. Thank you. So you wanna amend the uh, blippy also to specify one time? Okay. Yep. <laughs> so the amended version is to provide the funding for one time on one time and move it into FY twenty three. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thirteen zero. Uh, we'll next go to line two sixty six. which is on page 16. This is in the Department of the Judiciary. Uh, this provides in the courts and it provides for funding for civil legal services. We're going to move this to the general fund and make it ongoing. So I move this in as amended. Second. Um, what line is it again? Uh, 266. Is there? Yes. So I just want to, we're going to take out the phrase one time um, and we're going to put this amount of money in the baseline for funding of um, civil legal services for persons unable to afford a lawyer. So this will go to the courts and then to the um, civil legal services fund. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 zero. I have 265 We're, I'm about ready to say that I missed okay. a line. <laughs> okay. So I popped over line 265, but I'd like to uh, turn your attention to that line item. Uh, we actually, I believe, voted on this. We have not voted on this. Oh, no, you, uh, Representative Cardone tabled this on the last time go around. And so um, we would like to just move this. This is in the judiciary department under the courts and it establishes one IT field technician position and four courtroom technician positions to provide technical support to the courtrooms and assist in updating courtroom technology throughout the state. I move this in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 zero. Now we're on line 267 and it coordinates with lines 268 and 269. And we're going to need to do some language change that will affect um, some of these line items. So I'll go through them kind of slowly and we'll also clean it up in language as well when we get there. So line 267, this is in the Department of Economic and Community Develop Development. It is to um, start the Housing Opportunity Program. Uh, this line establishes two limited period um, public service coordinator, two positions that go through June 8th, 2024 and provides funding for um, all for the associate, associate and all other costs. So I'll move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Line 268 is in the same department and the same housing opportunity program. And this um, provides for competitive grants to regional service providers and supports town housing ordinance developments and planning boards and public processes. I move that in. I was seconded and just note that these three lines are all connected to an LD that was discussed earlier this evening. Correct. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 zero. And then in line 269 in the same department with the housing opportunity program, provide funding for community housing implementation grants to individual towns uh, to support community housing projects. I wanna move this in as amended 
The amount right now is 1,555,000. I would like to lower that by 100,000. And I'll be addressing what, to do, what we're doing with that 100,000 in the next sentence. I move that in as amended. Second then, the amendment. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. And then we'll have a additional line item in the budget, which the initiative that provides one-time funds to reimburse municipalities by June 30th, 2023, for any mandated costs of amending and implementing ordinances related to accessory dwelling units and multiple dwelling units allowed in residential areas. And that will be for $100,000. And um, so I move that in. And I will just say that this is something that deals with LD2003, but this was also an initiative put forth by the governor. They just happen to correlate. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. Okay. Now we're on line 271. And this is in the Department of Labor, Employment Security Services. It has to do with 38 limited period positions. Or, well, mm -hmm. yes, it does. And we would like to continue these as limited period positions through June 2025. Is the effect of eliminating the headcount in bonding and budgeting terms, but I'll second that. And these are all federally funded positions. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. Uh, the next line is 273. This is a study commission um, providing funding for the costs associated with uh, developing a, the paid family and medical lead benefits program. I'd like to move this in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. We'll next go to line 291. This is in the Department of Administrative and Financial Services, Central Administrative Applications. It provides funding to support the human resources management system and the modernization of the budget system. And I'd like to move that in. Is there a second? Second, sorry. <laughs> Representative Ducharme. I understand there's currently, um some mediation or some process going on with the prior service provider. And I was wondering if there was going to be some kind of return to the state or how that's going to work, if you could help us with that. For Commissioner Figueroa. Um, sure. Would you mind answering that question? There's whether we're going to, do you mean, are we going to recoup any of the money from the, from the, Prior vendor. Correct, correct. Okay. That's what I'm wondering. Hello, Commissioner. Hi. Hi, this is Kirsten Figueroa, the Commissioner of Administrative and Financial Services. So I'm, you know, I, we haven't had mediation with the vendor yet. There's a planned mediation with the vendor. Um, the state is definitely looking to recover or receive some kind of enumeration for what's happened, but I couldn't speak to whether we will or will not. Um, what I will say is that we would be very interested in getting ongoing licensing provided by the vendor so we may not we may not receive cash but we'd like to receive a service in the future um but i wouldn't really be able to talk more about what that's going to look like 
so that's in process. It's nothing you can talk about, but it's it's kind of an overview. Yeah, the mediation is scheduled for early May. Okay, thank you. Let's just finish. So, Representative Ducharm, does that answer your question? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, any further questions or discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor? 13 0. Just go. Uh, we'll next move to line 309. And this is in the Department of Administrative and Financial Services, COVID pandemic relief payments. This is to provide funding for a disaster relief program that will provide $850 relief payments to eligible Maine citizens. We are gonna move this in as amended. Um, we will be again, sending $850 checks to people who qualify. And we are changing the threshold um, that the governor had proposed to um, single family people who make under 100,000. If you're a head of a household, 150. And if you're a married couple, $200,000. And that will total 700,029,063,870. Any? I would second? second that. And if I might just comment and thank everybody who worked uh, this issue, including people in the building not here tonight. Uh, this is a significant issue and we're very hopeful that it can survive upstairs and allow the uh, issuance of payments uh, electronically to the extent possible and as soon as practicable to uh, a whole variety of people. Uh, I think the number would be approximately 857,000 people. So I wanna thank everybody for this. And this is app, this is for sure one time. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Any discussion? Further discussion or questions? Is that motion then amending the language part L? Oh, okay. So you're, and do you mind saying that total one more time? <laughs> uh, 729,063,870. All set, Maureen? Yep. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. I'll turn your attention to line 310 of the document. This is also in the uh, Department of Administrative and Financial Services, Revenue Services. I'd like to move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Next is line 312 and 313. And I wanna move these have to do with municipal revenue sharing. And I wanna move both of these in as amended based on the calculation that can be made with OFPR and the budget office. Second. And the, go ahead. No, go ahead. The reason that I'm using those words is that it's a calculation that's done after we've done our work in here involving a number of line items. And so it gives them the flexibility to move forward and calculate that for us. And this has to do with municipal revenue sharing. Correct. Any discussion, questions? All those in favor? 13 0. So now we'll move to language. Madam Chair, I think there's oh. two that you have missed. Oh, did I miss two again? Uh, yeah. I think line 50, line 254 needs to be amended um, uh, before we leave this document. Thank you. So line 254 of the MODOC on page 15 of the MODOC, 
And we um, had originally done some work on this and then um, we need to move to reconsider. So I make a motion to reconsider. Second. And we're, this is part of the judicial department within the courts. And we would like to, uh, the, the proposal was to establish five assistant clerk positions and we'd like to move that down to four. So I move that in as amended. Am I wrong about that again? I'm so sorry. Three, excuse me, three. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with the judicial department. I love the judicial department. It's okay, I've got you back. Okay, thanks. So we'll move that from five to three. I move that in as amended. Thank you. Second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Representative Cloutier? Thank you. So I actually had four lines that I'm wondering if we can check. So 63 and 64. Yeah. I have those as having been voted in already. Okay. And then 151. Yes, and then 233 was the last one. Okay, so let's, uh, line 151 on page 10 of the document, Efficiency Trust Maine. This is providing one-time funding to support electrical vehicle rebate programs. I'd like to move this in as amended and we're lowering the amount from 7 million to 3.5. Any discussion? And I'll, I will second that and comment that that has been moved. No, that's correct. At 3.5. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. What was the other one represented? 233. Two, three. Two, three. That's on page 14. Um, this is in Health and Human Services, Office of Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services. I move that in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. So now I'll turn to Maureen or any other members of the Can committee. I Are there any other line items that we're concerned um, one, about? 163. What page, Representative Heisen? Page um, 10. I have that we move that in okay. 13 to zero. Our other, do others have that? Okay. All right. So um, I think we'll move on to the language document. All right. Yep. Looks like everyone is ready to begin. We're going to start with language part D. This is in the IF and W committee. It was an ask to authorize Maine governmental facility authority to issue additional securities up to the amount of $39,500,000. Uh, I'd like to move this out. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, 13 zero. Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry, 12 uh, opposed? 12 to one. Uh, next we'll do language part E. Uh, this increases the earned income tax credit for tax years beginning on or after January one from 25 to 50% of the federal earned income tax credit for individuals with no qualifying children and from 12% to 25% of the federal earned income tax credit for all other eligible individuals. I'd like to move that in. Second. And I have a minor amendment to that. I'm sorry, I thought it would, they were separate things. That's what I, but if you'd like to make a friendly amendment to it. Yeah, just um, just because it goes with 
it has to do with taxes. I'll just explain it now, but maybe we'll move it in separately. But um, some of you might be familiar with the program that helps um, people file their income taxes. It's called the CASH program. It's um, run out of UMaine Augusta and New Ventures Maine. And so we're gonna do a $100,000 um, one-time uh, appropriation to that uh, program so that folks who need help filing their income taxes can get volunteer help that's trained uh, with I IRS certification. Um, so it, this, this felt like the right time to explain it. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, but the, we probably would, we hit, do we have a separate initiative on that? We do. I, I would, I let me ask Maureen, can we do it in this or do we need to do it differently? Um, I would make that a separate motion if you don't okay. mind, just to be okay. clear. Uh, so I guess it's just in as it is right now. We'll get to that other thing later. Okay, so the motion is in, um, just in, and it's been seconded. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. We'll, we'll next go to line I. Um, this is in um, a transfer of $10 million to the unappropriated surplus fund to the main of the general fund to the main budget stabilization fund. I move that out. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. I think our next line item was L, but or that language, but I believe that we did that when we voted in the line item that's associated with the COVID relief checks. So that was a 13 to zero vote, I believe. Right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and then we're on line M as in Mary, language M. This, this was a proposal to change the deputy director position from within the Department of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry to the Bureau of Land Parks, Land and Parks from serving at the pleasure of the commissioner to a classified confidential position. I move that out. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Our next is language uh, part U. This establishes the housing opportunity program within the Department of Economic and Community Development to encourage and support the development of additional uh, housing units in Maine. And I move that in as amended. And I discussed this earlier when we were doing the line item where we adjusted some of the funding to include one, an additional $100,000 line that was taken from an earlier line. What's the amount? The, the amount is the same as 3 million total. Second. I, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. The next is line Y. This creates the Education Stabilization Fund. There was a proposal to transfer $30 million into this fund. Uh, we're going to move this in as amended to 15 million. And we have some language. And there is language that we have attached to it that um, discusses exactly what this fund will do. It creates the um, education budget stabilization fund. And it, what this fund does is, as, as you know, we went to 55% for the first time to cover the um, cost of public education. And we wanna make sure that we have maybe some funds available should we need to make sure that we stay at 55%. And the language um, articulates that, that, that that's what these funds are used for. And so I'd like to move both that language in and decrease the amount from 30 million to 15. And Chair, did you yes. mention the cascade as the source oh, I did of not. that? Do you wanna discuss that or? Yeah, I think we, um, we agreed on this to be done through the cascade. I think it would become number two item, Maureen, after the top four. 
at 15 million. So this is fixed transfers on the right. cascade yes. at 15 million. Correct. Uh, and that is in addition to the 15 million transfer in this that was just uh, proposed? No, reduce no. the 30 out of the okay. large transfer. So that 15 million that you referenced is not in this, in this part. Right. Why transfer? It is actually only 15 million from the cascade. Okay. And it's fixed transfer right after all of the statutory current statutory. Does that mean we need to move this line out? You're amending you're amending the, the language of part Y, and in that part of that language, you're not doing any transfer. So that section that does the actual transfer from the unappropriated surplus to that fund would be deleted. So I think we have a second. I, I, yeah, I would second it. And I would just make absolutely clear that, and I think Maureen said that this would be the sixth item uh, after the four statutories. There's one more we'll talk about for number five. Okay, so this is actually not the one right after the statutory, but we'll get to that. Thank you. And then I'll just add that the language that we're talking out about mirrors LD 1963 that was recently passed by the legislature. So people are familiar with that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Next is language part Z. Uh, this is the transfer of uh, money that had to deal with the, uh, from the general fund to the efficiency main trust with the um, electric, the rebate program incentive program. And we lowered this number from 7 million to 3.5. I move that in as amended. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. So, we are next on JJ. Is that correct? Uh, you say FF. FF. Oh, FF, excuse me. FF is in the um, Health and Human Services arena. This has to do with the transfer of $30 million from the unappropriated surplus of the general fund to the main care stabilization fund. Uh, we would like to amend this in two ways we are going to be amending the 30 million to zero, but we also have some language um, similar to what we do with the education stabilization fund. But I was hoping maybe Representative Hymanson might give a couple quick sentences around uh, that language. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the purpose of this amendment is twofold. One, to gain legislative oversight over the fund transfers from the main care stabilization fund and two, to make it most likely that continuation of the appropriation will show up as a new initiative rather than simply flow to the baseline. This will ensure a budget review with a public hearing opportunity. And Thank that's, you. Oh, that's awesome. what I had to say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. In addition to um, that language around the main care budget stabilization fund, we also are including some language in FF around um, nursing homes. And I'm wondering, Maureen, if you have that language because I'm not finding it in with my I, I stack. Do, I do have it. it uh, a section of FF with uh, notwithstanding provisions of law. Health and Human Services is authorized to access the main care stabilization fund if additional funding above the $10,774,981 already allocated for those providers is required to implement the part quadruple A of the public law 2021 chapter 398 for nursing facilities and private non-medical institutions that care for residents who are older or disabled, or PNMI-Cs, and that's through June 30th, 2023. Thank you very much. 
So again, we want to move this in as amended. We're removing we're the $30 million that's been proposed. We're moving that to zero. We have additional language around the main care stabilization fund and the nursing home language. Okay. And I just want to remind uh, folks around the horseshoe as well as the public is that we already have about $59 million in the in the main care stabilization fund. So it's not that we're zeroing out that fund at all. It's we're just not adding 30 million to it. So um, just as an FYI. So any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? 13-0. Our next language part would be JJ. This correlated to uh, a line item that we discussed earlier tonight. It has to do with the proposed transfer of $1.3 million from the unappropriate surplus of the general fund to the main civil legal services. Um, we changed that in the line to be a general fund appropriation that is ongoing. And so we no longer need this language and I'd like to move this out. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Uh, next is language part KK. This has to do with the transfer of $300,000 uh, to the commission to develop paid family leave um, and medical benefits program. We, I would like to move this in as amended. The commission uh, no longer exists, LD 1952. And so I'd like to reconstitute the commission in order for this money to be used in this ongoing project that the legislature is working on. Second, the end is amended. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Next is NN. Uh, this was a transfer of $14.7 million uh, from the unappropriated surplus of the general fund to a reserve for retirement benefits. I move this out. Second. Maureen, if we're gonna change this um, retirement benefit thing, is this is this the place where we should? We, you we... you could actually. It's pretty much the same topic uh, for state for retirees. So if you want to just use that language part and replace it with what you are proposing for retirees, that okay, would work. I I make a friendly pullback of my. Uh my motion to move out and I'll move this in as amended. And I believe Senator Breen will provide some context for it. Yes, thank you. Second to friendly amendment. Thank you. So I'll describe um, what, we're, what we're gonna do. Um, the, um, right now the uh, public retirement system has a um, cap of 3% on the cost of living adjustment. And um, given the state of uh, inflation at the moment, um, we're going to raise uh, the base up to 5.4%. Um, so we're going to make an additional investment of $37.3 million, which would be um, increasing the COLA so that the base is increased not just to 3%, but to an additional 2.4%. And then in addition to that, um, we're gonna do a cumulative COLA increase from three to 4%, which um, is going to be paid upfront because it's an unfunded, it's part of the UAL, we have to pay in advance. So that'll be an additional $67.5 million. So in total, um, line NN is uh, no longer 14.7 million, but it's now 104.8 million. And um, this will be going to folks in the um, public retirement system um, paid up front, but with um, lots of good benefits over time. 
So are there any questions or comments on that? Okay, all in favor? 13-0. We'll next go to language part 00 as an Oscar. This is the transfer of $20 million from the unappropriated surplus fund to the main um, community college, free community college program. And I'd like to move this in. Oh, and we have some amended language on this, which is, is friendly. It's friendly. It's called in a really friendly way, the Bailey Amendment, because uh, Senator Bailey worked on it. And uh, Senator Bailey, would you like to just say a few words about that? You don't have one. Hold on. Got to find our Bailey Amendment. Here we go. So, oh, there we go. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's very simple. I'll just read it. It just adds to the uh, current language uh, final sentence that says to be eligible for the MCCS Free Community College, a high school graduate or equivalent must be enrolled full time, pursue an associate degree or academic credential, live in the state of Maine at the time of enrollment and while enrolled in the program, and accept all federal and state grants, scholarships, and any other funding sources. So we're just putting a little guardrails around the program. So we'll move that in as amended. Second. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Our next line item language part is PP. This has to do with uh, the transportation department and funds for um, the DOT in terms of highway and bridges and multimodal transfer funds. And I wonder if uh, Representative Millett, would you like to explain this to the group? Yes, um, <clears throat> the governor's original transfer was designed to be 85 million for roads and bridges, which we all know are in need, uh, and 15 million to multimodal. The plan as we've now negotiated and discussed it would be to put 50 million of the roads and bridges in the general fund line for FY23, 35 million as the fifth item in the cascade uh, following the four statutory ones, and then ask that the 20% distribution to the highway fund at the very end of the cascade be uh, slightly amended to insert the words, the first 15 million would be assigned to the multimodal uh, program at DOT. I think that covers the changes. Agreed, I'll second that. <laughs> That's 50 million of the general fund. The general fund. And then 35 million to Cascade. Mm -hmm. and, and the first 15 will come from, will go to the uh, multimodal. Multi and program. that's, yep. John, that is the, remember the 80 20 that happens after the yeah. Cascade item? That would be a fit within the 20% piece. Get we still so, wind up at 100 million. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. And then, uh, Madam Chair, we have language part XX. And this is the transfer of the funds that we voted on in an earlier line item that have to do with PFAS contamination of $5 million in FY22 and $55 million in FY23. I move those in. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, part XX. Is that one language. that was going to be amended? We. We, once we changed the formula for transportation, we decided to leave this as is. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No, no worries. Never hurts to check. So, Madam Chair, I think yes. maybe she was asking the question about the FX oh, the language. language as am the amendments to it. That's correct. We did have some language that we wanted to amend in this. And Representative Millett, would you like to talk about that language? Oh, a bit? I would love to. Um, the, these are changes that are minor in in a language, but the intent is, I think, uh, clearly reflective of what we'd like to do 
to make sure that this uh, now 60 million of new funding for the PFAS program be properly used and used for the right purposes. So we made two slight changes in the membership of the advisory committee so that there would be two members of, of the Senate appointed by the president, one member from the party holding the largest number of seats, one member from the party holding the second largest, two members from the house with the same language. Then we, we clearly uh, allowed one member representing the financial sector with expertise in agricultural fund, uh, finance and lending to be appointed by the commissioner of agriculture, conservation and forestry and five more members of the public representing the agricultural sector also appointed by the Commissioner of Agriculture, Conservation and Forestry. We later talked about the work of the advisory committee and the expectations going forward. And we know this is gonna be a more than a few months. It's gonna be an ongoing process that the committee would, this language is inserted, um, shall report to the joint standing committee of the legislature having jurisdiction over agricultural matters. And I believe we've added Maureen, the Department of Environment, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Environmental Protection as well. And lastly, a new sentence saying the Joint Standing Committee of the Legislature holding or having jurisdiction over agricultural man matters is authorized to report out legislation related to the annual report. And again, that has been uh, firmly amended to include the DEP uh, or the Environment and Natural Resources Committee, I believe. And that's about it. There's a slight change in language um, at the uh, very end, uh, and it would be in the summary. So it just describes the, the changes I've already uh, discussed. And, and may I add, add that in the, the language there, it's also going to be a, a language about advisory committee, about the appointments and able to convene if the appointments, right. certain appointments haven't been made. It's somewhat standard for uh, legislative committees, which mm -hmm. this has become. And there's a small appropriation for right. the legislature for the expenses of the legislators on the committee. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? 13-0. Madam Chair, we'll go to language part H. I apologize for missing that on the first round through. Uh, this is in the taxation committee. It has to do with the educational opportunity um, uh, student loan uh, credit. Uh, it's a revamp of the system. And we have an amendment to this, which I believe Senator Bailey will be discussing as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. The amendment just recognizes as, as uh, most of you know, I've had my concern about this uh, has been just doing something to try to grant for, grandfather um, some of the current recipients. And so what we've done is um, put in language that if uh, a STEM recipient has received any credit in the last three years, well, last three years, they'd be receiving $3,500 for two years and that extra $1,000 wouldn't go towards their $25,000 cap. And this is just uh, you know, recognizing that these recipients in particular probably made life choices based on uh, the promises we made for the previous credit and allowing them to just transition to the new program. Thank you. Thank you. Any um, questions? Discussion on that? I just got late word from my boss, so I have to say this, <laughs> that the main revenue service regarding the change to part, part H, that they were going to request a uh, position. Position. Yeah, and I have the information from my boss to pass out regarding. Okay, <laughs> thanks. You know, when your boss brings you, he, yeah. he should be. Self-funded. Self-funded. 
So, um, Maureen, if I understand this correctly, um, the Maine Revenue Service is uh, requesting a position uh, that would be um, effective October 1, 2022, um, a tax examiner to full-time permanent position um, and all other that would um, receive training, perform desk audits and provide taxpayer assistance relative to the one-time increase in the maximum allowable SLRTC and to perform ongoing desk audits for the purpose of determining the validity of the SLRTC claims. Sound good? Any questions? All right. Um, hearing none, all those in favor? We move and second it. Sorry. Sorry. We'll move it in as amended with uh, both the amendment by Senator Bailey that she read and then the recent addition. I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. We're going to be doing some work on uh, pension deductions, and I believe Representative Millett will be discussing that with the or making the motion. We'll do the tax exemption one first. Sure. We have uh, an amendment that <clears throat> will benefit a lot of private sector retirees as well as increase the current statutory exemption for. Uh, pension income by state employees and teachers, which is currently capped at 10,000. The proposal would raise that cap for the tax year we're now in for filers next April uh, to 25,000 and increase it by 5,000 in tax year 23 and another five in tax year 24. Uh, so that would get us to, in the next biennium at the second year, approximate what social security exempts from taxation right now and would benefit uh, a significant number of private sector employees who have 401k and, and IRA income that are currently not allowed to uh, use the, uh, uh, the pension exemption from the main state income tax. So uh, I would move it. Uh, we have the draft language. I assume Maureen has it. And uh, I would so move. We were using that as their description for that for them. Yeah. Yes, I, I do not, I do not currently know. possess that language. So I'm hoping that it exists somewhere. <laughs> and, and I'm looking to Commissioner Figueroa, hoping for a nod. <laughs> I got no nod, so we will work on that. Uh, I'll second Representative Millett's description that you moved yeah. in. And I'm not sure whether I gave my copy to you, Senator, or... Oh, I have it. I can give it to Maureen. <laughs> um, any questions or discussion before we that's been moved by Representative Millett, seconded by Representative Purse. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. And um, Representative Millett, we already did the COLA one. Was there something else you were going to describe? We did that already. Oh, we did? Yeah. Okay. 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 I, don't, I think we have covered the three new uh, issues of significance. Um, and I guess we did describe this adequately before. 
we have a few other things that came to our attention that we need to um, address and make a motion to reconsider a few things. So a couple more sheets of paper to get through. Uh, right now, though, I'd like to ask the, us to reconsider something that we did in the change package on page 31 of the change package. There were two initiatives. Uh, they had to do with um, the behavioral health uh, system. system that we pulled together with a variety of LDs. And there was just some clarifying language that needs to be included in that proposal that we've already all voted on unanimously. The clarifying language is that these funds are non-lapsing for the purposes specified. And also that um, the department will report back to the Joint Standing Committee of the Legislature having jurisdiction over appropriations of financial affairs and health and human services by September 30th, 2022 on its timeline and progress toward finalizing and implementing the rate study. And uh, the revised rates for these priority services shall take effect January 1, 2023. These are really just clarifying, lang clarifying um, sentences to be absolutely clear what we were, um, the legislative intent around this be these behavioral health initiatives that we're putting forward. So- And there's I, no change in the money. No change in the money. So I make a motion to reconsider. Second. And all those in favor? 13 zero. And then I make a motion to move in this amended language. Yeah, I'm gonna second that. And just as a friendly question, mm -hmm. uh, do I have the green amendment as did you intend? Yes, or? that's what you that's what we have. And could you just clarify for me? I know that we had asked uh, Commissioner Figueroa to address that issue of the coal are applicable to nursing facilities. Is that embedded in here? No, um, we did that with um, the main care stabilization okay. section of language yeah. with, we'll FF, with FF. So we've covered that. Yeah. And this is relative, this is relevant to the uh, behavioral health package that we voted on in the change package. Yeah. I'll second that. Great. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor? 13-0. Our next order of business will be um, some language, and this is in section K1, a transfer from the Liquor Operations Revenue Fund. Uh, we would like to amend this. Uh, we had the number here of 20 million, and we're moving that to 56 million during the fiscal year of 22-23. And I just wanted to clarify that original 20 million was in LD715 from last year. You had voted then to transfer in 23, 20 million, and now you are saying transfer another 30, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. So you're, the additional amount. To a total of 56. Thank you. I could not remember the number. We're transferring an additional 36. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. We have another initiative, initiative brought forth. Um, through uh, Ledge Council, I believe, uh, for the legislature to establish one senior legislative analyst position uh, within OFPR. Uh, so I'd like to move that in. It totals um, $159,125. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. And then we also have disaster recovery um, proposal that we'd like to put forth. This was brought by the um, Commissioner Figueroa. I'll just read it so that we're all clear about it. Fiscal year 2021 year ending, um, year end unappropriated surplus priority transfer. The state controller at the close of the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022, as the next priority after the transfer is authorized pursuant to the main revised statute, and this is the cascade, will transfer $2.5 million for the reserve of the general fund operating capital pursuant to a section. And it transfers this. Um, this has to do when we have um, disasters around the state, like the Halloween storm. Um, we need to have some funds available so that when we need to match with FEMA 
or um, access those funds from the federal level. We have to have some funds of our own in the state. And this is putting funds in this, uh, in this, in the cascade for this purpose so that then we can then access these federal dollars. I am sure Commissioner Frigerwald could explain that in maybe more detail and more clarity than I did, but that's the gist of it. I make a motion to move it in. Second. Any discussion? Uh, can I get some clarification? And so this is the, the third touch to the cascade you're doing, and I just need the priority. So, so far I have the first priority being the fixed transfer for roads and bridges. I have a priority for the budget uh, education stabilization fund. And now this one, so I just need to know where you would fit this one in, in on those three fixed transfers. Would it be the last? Yeah, the I last think we'll one? put it in last. Thank you. So that we've uh, had a motion and seconded for the FEMA money. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of this? 12 to zero. Um, Senator Breen, um, when we were discussing, um, I'm not even sure what section we were discussing, but she brought up the cash program and making some adjustments to that. And she's gone to get the language off her desk. We just, she just doesn't have it. We don't have it in front of us. We apologize for that. Uh, so we'll just give her a second to get back um, with that. Uh, I think I will um, go ahead with this initiative uh, I discussed earlier about um, the cash program. This initiative would provide um, one-time funds for a statewide collaboration of nonprofit and for-profit partners to provide free volunteer tax assistance including the filing of state tax returns, outreach to low-income individuals and families about federal and state tax credits, financial education, connections to financial services and other resources, education for providers and volunteers, and statewide data collection. It's a one-time um, appropriation of $100,000 from the general fund. So I would move that in for a second. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. All set? I am all set. Okay. Uh, next, I'd like to um, move in LD 1501. This is an act to prote protect the oral health care for the children of Maine, school-based oral health care services, and we'll establish the program. We have a general fund appropriation of uh, $95,737 in FY um, in 2022 and an additional, yeah, there's three sections to it. So the total general fund appropriation will be 100,904. No, 100, oh my gosh, I've lost my mind. Hold on, let me just get that. So 
So this has to do with oral health for the kids, for kids. It's LD 1501. It's, in, it's been engrossed and been on the table and we're gonna move it into the budget. Um, there's funds in the general fund for it. And then also um, the all funds and those total 100, 100,900 and I can't, I can't believe I can't read this. <laughs> 194 110 and 293 342. My apologies. It's it's 1 30 in the morning, I guess. I don't know. So I move that in. Second. Could you repeat that? <laughs> where's your where's your <laughs> uh any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Uh, next, we I would like to discuss LD three nine three. It's in, um, been engrossed, and it is a um, think for the title, an act to improve the child welfare system. And I will turn to Representative Heimlinson, who's very familiar with this bill. If you'd like to describe it briefly for people, yes, thank you. Um, this is a prevention program for um, families at risk with children who are at risk of um, child neglect and abuse. It's a five part bill that um, expands existing programs like home builders and um, parents as partners. Um, so it is uh, a prevention program so that kids are helped and families are helped before um, bad things happen. Thank you, Representative Hymanson. And uh, this has a, a couple different sections of general fund to it and then uh, some all funds as well, but it totals uh, $2,448,237. So I'd like to move that in. I would second it, and if I might just comment briefly, uh, this is a very important uh, commitment to the child protective work that's going on in the Government Oversight Committee and Senator Bailey, Representative Faye, and Representative Ryder and I, we had a meeting yesterday where we had a special meeting to really refocus on an action plan. And this was discussed and it is a priority. I know it came out of the Health and Human Services Committee unanimously. And we spoke to it yesterday in GOC. And I think it's uh, important that we do it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Uh, the next bill we're going to move in is LD372, and this is a unanimous report out of the HHS committee as well. And um, basically what this does is um, expand eligibility for the um, for, to provide Maine children access to affordable health care. This is known as the CHIP program. And um, we're going to be expanding access to this program for families who are, who are um, currently the program goes up to 200% of um, federal poverty level. We're going to go up to 300%. And um, this brings Maine into uh, compliance or into parity with the rest of the New England states. And um, in providing this benefit to children, um, it, and it also extends, uh, part of this program is also extends coverage to kids who are 19 and 20. And um, it does have a general fund appropriation uh, of, well, in total it's about, uh, $3 million of general fund, but it has um, a very healthy federal match that brings in about another 9 million. So uh, it's a good program. And um, altogether, it's gonna be about a $12 million program, all funds. So I'd like to uh, move that in. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Madam Chair, I'd like to next um, move in a transfer from the Department of Health and Human Services MAP account of $38.0 million. And Maureen, do you need any Could more description? Could you repeat that? 
uh, move move in from the DA from the Department of Health and Human Services map account. I want to transfer that over to. You, yes, I think you're lapsing balances at the end of the fiscal year. So. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13-0. Um, I believe that concludes every, all of the amendments that we wanted to make in adjustments unless Maureen or others feel we are. Okay, so I make a motion to move in um, LD1995 as amended. I'll second that, and I would assume that the good Senate representative to your left might want to exempt it from the table, or is that after we yeah. adopt it? Yeah. So uh, the amendment to LD1995 has been uh, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. Representative Martin. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. I now move that we exempt it from the appropriation statement. Is there a second? Oh, second. Second. Oh, no. Any discussion? All those in favor? 13 0. So uh, before we adjourn, I want to thank everybody around the horseshoe. I want to thank the DAFS Commissioner for her help with this project. Um, I certainly want to thank Maureen Dawson, our amazing analyst, and the uh, whole department of um, uh, OFPR. And um, we're really, uh, really pleased to be able to vote out a bit, vote out our amend our committee amendment in unanimous fashion. And I, I thank everybody on the committee for all your hard work. So. Um, we have to get uh, Senator Davis home to bed because he is president pro tem tomorrow. So um, huh? today, today, that's right, in short order. So uh, we're going to adjourn for the evening and see you all very shortly. Thank you.